afternoon, Peter Sidwell here. It's Masterclass Junior time. It's Monday, time for the start of the week, and we've got an amazing recipe because it is British Pie Week this week. So what we decided to do, didn't we, because it's just the boys in the kitchen today. Little girl is upstairs doing her schoolwork. So boys on the, in the kitchen on their own, aren't they? So, um, yeah, so... We're going to try and fuse together, like, our, our family's passion for food is Italian. And we're going to blend that with a British pie for you. Um, just wanted to say a huge thank you as well to uh, Max out in the Lake District. Max, Paddy and Harry, the Spaniels, yesterday. We had a great time yesterday morning. Um, we lit the first barbecue of the year, didn't we? We had a barbecued breakfast bagel. And we also made the most amazing Marmite glazed hash browns with fried egg on the barbecue on my Komodo Joe. It was amazing. So we had a lot of fun. So if you want to see that, uh, go onto the Masterclass page and we've reposted it. Um, and it's actually the original is on Max out in the Lake District. Uh, great bunch of dogs. Kerry was really good, wasn't he? It was good fun, wasn't it? So, right, on to the recipe today. So... And if you have any questions, please do fire them our way. Emily's there, poised and ready. She will translate them over to me and we'll answer them if you've got them. So, first of all, we're going to get the chicken cooked, aren't we? So, Thomas, can you get me that big grown-up chopper knife there? Hold it really carefully as you do. Down. That's it. Right, we're going to cut the chicken up first. So, three chicken breasts here is probably going to be enough because they're a decent size. I'm going to do this and then I'll wash my hands, yeah? So what you can do is get the tongs ready and you can put them in the pan. So the smaller you cut the chicken, the quicker it will cook. The quicker it will be in the oven, the quicker it will be in your belly. So, not yet, son. Not yet. We've got to drizzle it with olive oil. So do you want to get the oil drizzler? Bring that over and then we'll want the salt and the pepper. Really important to get your pan hot while you prepare your ingredients so that you actually get a sizzle and you start cooking everything. Are we all right, Emily? Yeah. We're okay, are we? Go Good. Are you gonna go that side? Right, I've got some little rubber caps here on my pan um, so that it means you can hold the pan without burning yourself, you see? Clever, isn't it? Yeah, but be careful because that pan's hot. So are you gonna drizzle some oil on these for me? Yeah, you start drizzling. Oil onto the chicken, not in the pan. Really important. Season and oil the ingredients first while the pan gets nice and hot. It's not coming in. It is. There you go. You're just being impatient, aren't you? Yeah. yeah. Like you. Like, like me. You. Right, I'm going to put this knife over here to wash. Come on, Emily, fire your first question at me. I know you're eager. Well, can you prep the chicken now? Yeah. What can we use instead of chicken if you didn't necessarily So, have? you could, um, you could use pork. I've actually done this recipe. It's a Tuscan-inspired flavour profile. So, we're going garlic, fennel, wine, tomatoes. For me, that typifies Tuscany. When we, we, we spent a lot of time when the kids were smaller, uh, Poppy in particular, in Tuscany, um, and really took the time to understand the food and the flavours. And for me, chicken and fennel, stunning combination of flavours. Add garlic to it, oh my God, it's just the best. And then we're gonna wrap it up in a pie. What more could you want? All right? Right, tongs, chicken in. Yeah? So. There you go, like that. All right, so you pop those in. Don't touch the chicken, just use your tongs and get that in. I will get a spoon. You wanna go slow today? Do it on my way. Right, I'm gonna get the power up, put the fan on, and here we go. So what was your best bit yesterday, cooking with the dogs? How many sausages did you feed those dogs? A lot, didn't you? Yeah. Okay. Right. I know, they're a bit cheeky, weren't they? I think it's Paddy's the naughty one, I think. I'm not sure. Yeah, Paddy's. 
Like that. Okay, so don't stir the chicken. Leave it still now that it's all there. Right, let me take that out of the way and we'll get a fresh chopping board. Do you want to go over there and get me a fresh chopping board, Tom? Yeah, well, we have a question. Yeah. Um, you work as a potato pie if you didn't want to use potato pie? As a what, sorry? Potato pie if you didn't want to use potato pie. What, put potato on top? Yeah. A potato pie. Yeah, I guess so. Um, what would be really nice if you made this, and the good thing about this pan is you can make it all in there, you could get loads of potatoes, roast them all in garlic, and rosemary and a bit of parmesan and then sit it all on top and put it in the oven so it became almost kind of hot potty. Hot potty? Yeah. Is it Teflon? Uh, well, it, it's a smart ceramic, it's aluminium, so it, it acts like these big heavy cast iron pans, but it's super light, isn't it? Tom, you pick that up and show them how light it is. See? Pop it back. It is super light, but it works really well. So it's got a tef it's got a non-stick coating, and then on the top of the lid, it's got these like little dimples so that when the moisture evaporates and hits the top of the roof, it drips back down into the pan so you don't lose the hydration that you put in. Right, so let's get the flavours going while the chicken's caramelised. Are you cutting onion today? Yeah, you're gonna go? Do you want rice? Right, you get yourself a little knife. Oh, I don't get a big boy's No, you don't get a big boy's knife, no. That one, that's one, yeah. This, so let me show this knife. This is a tipless knife, so it's much better for kids. Um, it's a little bit safer, but it's still sharp. It's important that knives are sharp, because if they're sharp, it means it's effortless when you're cutting. Uh, and when it's effortless and easy, you're much safer. So, you're one of these weird right-handers, aren't you? So you're gonna do it with your right hand. So you do it the opposite of me, so it's like a mirror. So I'm like that, so you do that side, don't you? Yeah, so hold it with one hand like that. You just get your two fingers on the top like that, and your thumb there. So turn your hand like that, hold it, push down, and in. Yeah, and what you do is that. Yeah, nice and steady. Do you see how you're not cook cutting all the way through? Because otherwise the onion will fall apart, yeah? So like this. Yeah? Come on, you're the son of a chef. There's a lot riding on this. All right, that's it. And then pull it out, yeah? So push it in, yeah? And then pull it towards you along the base of the chopping board, yeah? Does that feel confident? Yeah? Cool. Right, so turn it that way now. And then you put the knife in like that, but you only put it in that far. So squeeze it together. So your knife's a little bit small, but let me cut it for you. All right? I, I'm a firm believer in like teaching the kids how to use a knife. I know it's, it's, a, it's probably more scary for me as a parent, you know, live streaming this than it is for him. Um, but I think if you teach them these skills, it'll stay with them forever and they will be able to cook when they're older, they'll have confidence in the kitchen, which means they'll cook good food, okay? So, right, crimp it together like that. Can you imagine I'm going like that, yeah? So crimp it together. Use your, yeah, like a Jedi Knight. So watch where Dad's hand, like that. So you're crimping it all together. Yeah? Mm -hmm. And then you push your knife through and down like that. Yeah? Good, so push the knife. That's it, so push it towards Emily and then back. So forwards and then backwards. Yeah, forwards, backwards. Brilliant, well done. That's good. Did a good job there. Do we have any more questions or is everyone just like holding their breath while Thomas chops an onion? <laughs> Oh, are these um, new people from yesterday's feed? I think so, possibly. So we were absolutely blown away yesterday with the sheer volume of people that were watching. It was it was really humbling. Um, 
and it was amazing to think you could kind of connect with so many people with your food. It was really good, wasn't it? We were watching all day long and seeing how the numbers grew and grew and grew. And it's like, what was it, 110,000 views since yesterday? This is, blows my mind. Right, so onions in, okay? And now we're going to do the fennel, okay? Yeah. So let's get the fennel done. Grab the fennel. You know what that is, don't you? So fennel, um, beautiful, beautiful vegetable. Amazing with chicken, beautiful with tomato. The absolute perfect combination. Really good with fish. I mean, this is so versatile. I would strongly recommend get this growing in the garden this year because they are delicious. Okay? Right, let's get rid of the base. Are you going to do some slicing on this one? Yeah. Yeah? Okay. So what you'll see, Emily, can you just cut into this for me? Can you see that core there? That's the root, and that kind of holds it all together. All right? But that doesn't cook down and go soft, so we have to remove that. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut it there, cross there like that, so you've got a little V shape. Yeah? Yeah. Cool. Right, so I've taken the lid off the pan as well, because I actually want the water and the juices to come out, because I want this to caramelise. So I want it nice, strong heat. haven't stirred it yet since we put the last piece of chicken in, because I want direct contact with the pan. I want it to crisp up. I want caramelisation, because caramelisation needs flavour. Right, fennel. Now, the good thing about fennel is you also get herb as well as a vegetable. So we're going to take the herbs off. We don't need to cook those, but we do want to add them. Okay? Are we ready? Mm -hmm. Right. Take about two centimetres off the top there. That's it. Because they're, can you see, they're a little bit dried out. Put those over there. And then we're going to, the same way we did the onion. So turn it that way. Mm -hmm. I'm going to take that piece away for you. Mm -hmm. And then we cut in like that. No, no, right hand for you. All right, so cut in and pull it back because you want it to stay together. That's all right, we'll deal with that. So we're basically chopping it into lots of strands. So we'll have to see what our friends in America make of our cooking, won't we? How are you knowing all this? Have you got the power? Just found a new app. Right, so we're just going to shred this now. So if I just, if you cut into this, Emily, so you can see what's going on. It is the same as an onion, really, but just a slightly different shape. If you have a little smell, see what you can smell. What does it smell like to you? Fennel! Yeah, I know it's, you know it's fennel. It's got an aniseed flavour. And it's a, such an amazing combination with the tomatoes. We're going to put a little bit of wine in there. Mummy's, Mummy's wine. I've got an orange wine, which apparently is one of the new food trends for this year. And it's a great, a white wine. It's not got anything to do with oranges, but it's more orange in colour because they, um, they leave the skins in there. Um, so I bought one out of sheer curiosity. Uh, and I'm just going to use the last of it. Am I chopping this or you? Oh, I'll chop it, right. So if you don't like fennel, but don't worry about it. Don't put it in, it's not essential. But, I, oh my goodness, it tastes good with the tomatoes and the garlic. You totally could, but what I would do is just smash them up, you know, in, in like a pestle and mortar, like this. Just crack them and open up all the flavours. Because a lot of people have fennel seeds sat in the back of their fridge, cupboard, and they don't really know what to do with them. Um, but they're delicious. Right, so, two cloves of garlic, please. So now we'll start to turn this. And you can see I've got some caramelization now on the chicken. We've got a really good non-stick pan, so I know we're in safe hands. There we go. Bit easier inside in the kitchen, isn't it? And it was yesterday. Right, and also, going to add I've just put this in to freak them out, basically. No! <laughs> Anchovies. Now, no. come on, son. No, I'm not eating. Man up. <laughs> Always does this. So, anchovies are a salted Mediterranean fish, and they are incredibly umami based. So, they just give, they're not fishy at all. They just give a real savoury hit. Now, Thomas. Open wide. 
I'd give you £50 if you ate one, live on camera. No. <laughs> he won't. Never. So we're just going to chop it up. They will melt away to nothing. But what they will give is a real foundation of flavour. All right? Garlic. We'll just crack that garlic. Wait, wait, wait. You can do it. You just must wait till I'm watching you. All right? So just go and get me a cloth so I can wipe the knife. Good lad. Because I want you to be safe. Yeah? I'm not touching this. No, I know you're not. There you go. They're in the pan now. Right, so when you do this, you either do it with a fist or you do it with the palm of your hand with your fingers and your thumb up because you don't want to slip and cut yourself, do you? So what are you doing? Fist or hand? Fist. Okay, fist. There. Hey, well done. Yeah. Um, I don't know because we'll taste it. So we may well add a little bit more salt. We may not. Don't do that. Um, you can certainly use it instead of salt because they are salty and they give that depth of flavour. But unless you taste it, you won't know. Okay. But good question. Good question. Right, son. So we've got our garlic in. Are you going to pour the wine in? Yeah. All right, all of that wine. Get off. Um, we have that, um, what can we yeah, add if we don't like using anchovies? Uh, you would have to add a little bit more salt. All it's going to do is add a depth of flavour. It's not a primary, it's a secondary flavour. You won't know it's in there, but if you have a real aversion to it, don't add. I'm not a precious chef. I don't think you have to add it. If you don't like it, don't add it. Um, that's okay. Right, pour the wine in, son. All of it. And then we'll crank the heat right up. Now, can I have that tin of tomatoes, young man? So we want to boil this up, get rid of the alcohol. Because what we want is the flavour of the grape, not the alcohol. Here, I'll do it for you. And there's some chicken stock there, son. Just there, in that bowl. Go round. That's it. So, in with our chopped tomatoes. These are good Italian chopped tomatoes. Um, if you've only got a sort of a cheaper supermarket one in the cupboard, pour it through a sieve because about 30% of it is water and you're only going to have to boil it out to get the flavour. So pour it through a sieve, then add what I would call the pulpa. And then I'm just going to pour my chicken stock into the can, get rid of it, get all the extra little bits out of there. We don't want to waste those, do we? Good Italian tomato sauce. So that's chicken stock and the tin tomatoes in. Do you want to give that a little stir from a young man? Now, we're going to add some of this parmesan to the pastry. But first, there's the skin here. Are you all right, Emily? Are you on the move? She's on the move, Tom. She's adjusting cameras. So you, there's the rind of the parmesan. That is full of flavour, but you don't want to eat it. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut that off. Can you see that, Emily? Yeah. Yeah? So I've got my cheese here now, but I've got this rind and it's just got loads of flavour in. So chuck it in, you know, add it to soups, stews, all that sort of thing, um, and you'll just get more flavour. My cooking is all about layer upon layer upon layer of flavour. What's up? Anchovy. Anchovies are delicious, mate. You'll love them. One day, when you're a big lad, you will like them, I promise. Right, okay, so that is our filling. That's just gonna cook away now. We're gonna make the pastry next. So, all good pies need pastry, in my opinion. So, I've got 350 grams of plain flour. All right? And then I have got 175 grams of butter. You could use margarine if you want. You could use a mixture of margarine and olive oil. If you like that sort of thing, um, it's whatever you prefer. I think butter makes a good pastry, but it depends. The question is me. <laughs> oh, I know what's coming here. Is a pie is a pastry butter? When is a pie not a pie? <laughs> is it a pastry butter and now, or just a lid? I was brought up in Yorkshire, although I don't live there anymore, but I'm an honorary Yorkshireman. A pie must have a bottom. If it has no bottom, it is a stew with a lid. Now, this is quite controversial in our workplace, isn't it, Emily? 
Because Emily thinks a pie is still a pie without a bottom. It's not. I don't think it is. It's a stew with a lid. Yeah, but when you want to take it off, it's just... Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll uh, let, let's put it out to the world, yeah? Is a pie, does a pie need a bottom to be a pie? Yes. How does it go to the toilet? Stop it, Thomas. Right, so, if, can you see this all right, Emily, what I'm doing here? So all I've done is rub the flour and the butter together, all right, to resemble crumble, a nice crumble texture. All right, that makes a good pastry. Now, the key to good pastry is cold ingredients. So, Thomas, can you... F That's fine there, son. Can you just grab a measuring jug from underneath the oven there? Yeah. And some cold water. Ah, uh, thank you. <laughs> you are my favourite viewer. Yeah. Is it my mum? <laughs> cold water, please, son. Oh, we've got everybody. What? <gasps> Pie needs to have a bottom, yeah? If you can't put a slice, it's not pie. Thank you. <laughs> I knew I was right. So, I'm going to add some parmesan now, and this is going to give a richness, some good flavour. It's going to be good. And this is kind of where Italy meets Yorkshire. <laughs> Made in Cumbria and the Lake District. Looking out at the mountains and the sheep on the fells. It's a good day today. Right. There we go. Right, son. So, are you going to add... I would like... Four spoons of water. That's a lot of water, son. I don't trust you with that. Oh, you've got exactly. a lot of water me. I know you. I right. don't trust you. Right, so, transfer to a metal spoon. Because what you don't want to do is over-mix this. Right, so let's have three or four spoons of water in the paste. In, no, in there. Because we're making pastry, son. Yeah. Let me get us started. I've got the eye, you see. So, in the recipe it tells you how much water to add, but it very much depends, and it's all about the touch, the feel with pastry. So we transfer to a metal spoon, because we don't want the heat of my hand to adjust the pastry. Right, a little bit more. Right, I'll have two more of those, please, son. You like pastry, don't you? Right, okay, there we go. So, I'd like one more in there, please, just at the bottom, and then I'm going to show everyone what the texture should look like. Yeah, oh, sorry. One more. This pastry for me. Oh, yeah. Yeah? All right, well, let's just show everyone what the pastry should look like. All right? So, that might not look much like pastry yet, does it? No. So what we're going to do is just compress it with your hand. So use the palm of your hand and push it away and pull it back. Just gently. This is not bread, so we're not trying to work the gluten. All we're trying to do is just bring the pastry together. Do you want to have a mix of that? Mm -hmm. That smells like the tomato soup and pasta I have. Yeah. Wait, yeah. Right, give that a little mix, please. If there are any questions, son, just answer them for me, yeah? <laughs> Careful what you ask him. Yeah. He'll tell you. Yeah. yeah. So, can you make wholemeal pastry if you don't want it all white pot? Yes. Yeah. Correct answer, well done. Right, okay, so, once your pastry gets to this stage, all right, pop it into the fridge for five minutes. It's not vital, it will still work and we're going to show you, but I always find if you've got the time, rest your pastry in the fridge or the freezer for five minutes in between each stages because when you mix and work and knead pastry, it kind of becomes quite stretchy and it naturally wants to retract and stretch back. So if you roll that pastry now, it's just going to go and contract again. And then when we roll it out and force it into a tin, it's going to naturally want to spring away. Whereas if you let it rest and then put it back where it was, it'll stay. Okay? We've got a question. Yeah. Just can you go to elasticity because you're overworked Absolutely. The least amount of working, it's the opposite of bread dough. 
You don't want gluten, all right? Pastry and cakes are at that end of the spectrum. Bread's at the other end, all right? So the least amount of mixing you can, the better your pastry will be. Okay, uh, right, let's get some pastry and let's roll out. Okay, so. Let's pop that there, because you can guarantee. Right, can you pass me that pastry tin? All right, so I've got some more here that I've rested. That's it, good lad. Right, so, we're just gonna use the palm of our hand. All right, and then put my flour over there to one side. Little bit of flour, okay. And then we're gonna roll out, roll it and turn it. Now, a top tip for you. Always start with the shape you want to finish with. So I have a round tin. This is a crusty bake tin, and you can see it's got holes in it. That means all the air can get underneath it, and it means I get it nice and crispy with no soggy bottom. Nobody wants a soggy bottom, do they? No. <laughs> right, so what I'd like you to do is tell me how am I gonna check that that is gonna fit in there? How am I going to do that? Come on, use that engineering brain of yours. How, is it, how are you going to work it out? How's that going to fit in there? You Go on, you tell me. Is it going to fit? Yeah. How do you know? Because the bakery has to go inside. Yeah, but how do you know that's big enough? I don't know. Look, lay it on there, yeah. and I've got a rim all the way around the outside. Mm -hmm. So do you think it's going to fit? Yeah. Right, okay. So when you're transporting your pastry, fold it in half. Don't try and stretch it, because we don't want it to get thin. Then place the tin in place. Then fold it into quarter. Then it's easy to lift, and then can you unfold that for me? Yeah, from there, unfold once and then twice. Perfect. Now, to get it in to the corners, this is a bit like when I took you into bed. So you lift up the pastry and push it into the corner like that. And I'll give you a little tip. If you take a bit of pastry off like that and use that to push it into the corners. But it's important you lift it up first. Can you do that for me? So you get it all tucked into the corners nicely. Okay, bro. So, my chicken is cooked. I'm just letting that simmer. You make it advanced freeze? Yeah, totally. Make an advanced freeze it. You can make individual pies. You can make this is perfectly all right as a stew. And you could put a pastry top on it and it could not be a pie. Yeah. <laughs> um, it'll make an amazing stew. You could serve this up with pasta if you wanted to. Um, we're doing it with pie. Um, but you could also do like a lasagna. You could do a chicken and fennel lasagna which would be amazing. You know, with sheets of pasta, white sauce, that'd be delicious. You could do Italian chicken calzones. You could fill it into bread dough. You could do all sorts of things. What I would urge you to do, make more than you need. You make your pie and then put the rest in the freezer for a day when you haven't got as much time to cook. All right? Because they're going back to school next week. No! Yay! No, it's gonna be good. You know you've missed school. You've missed your mates, haven't you? You've been out playing in the garden all day today, haven't you? Yeah. It's been hard to get you in today to do your schoolwork. Right, another little tip for you. Egg wash your pastry first. It's much easier. You don't end up with chicken in your egg beaten egg. All right, and if you want a really nice glaze, do one egg and one egg yolk. And then you get a deeper golden glaze if you want. Okay, can you paint around the edges there for me, son? I'm going to get a last bit, the other piece of pastry to do the lid. Okay. So on the tops, because that's where the pastry is going to meet. Okay, so. I've got my pastry there. Can I just move you over while you paint that? And again, we're going to start with the shape we want to finish with. Okay? So round, roll the pastry and turn it, roll and turn. There we go. Okay, so that's ready to go. All we need to do now is get our chicken in. 
So I'll just wait for Thomas to finish that. I have one in the oven that I've made earlier to show you, which is always good. Right, okay. So what I want you to do is do what I did and fold that pastry up. Yeah. Good. Right, let's pop the lid on. So remember, so which way are we going to unfold it? So if I pop it there, now you unfold it for me. Perfect. It's a pie, it's got a top and a bottom. Just what every pie needs. So I'm going to crimp the edges. Right, I need you to brush it for me again. Yeah? And then just use your knife, start in the pie and work out. Okay? makes me think of grandma when I do that. Right, you egg wash that, I'm going to get a tray for it to sit on. Yeah. Oh, you don't have to, you, you could do it without. I just wanted to kind of carry on the Italian theme with the pastry. Um, you could just, onion powder is really good, garlic powder, paprika, you could put herbs in it, you just do it old school. Um, you know, so you can do what you like with it, really. You know, you could even change the whole flavour profile and you could have a curry chicken pie if you want and make a curry and put it in and then put spices. I mean, you like the idea of that, do you? Put spices in your pastry and things like that. The technique is there. Um, and it's up to you to explore the flavours that you like or, you know, that are familiar to yourself. Okay? Right, son. Give me a little sprinkle of black pepper on there, and I'll do the salt. Tiny bit, not a lot, doesn't need much. Oh, somebody's asked a question, actually. Um, do you put a cut in the top of your pie? You don't have to, but if you want, you can. The theory is it releases the steam. The jury's out. <laughs> I didn't do it on this one, and it worked. So I don't know what to tell you. Right, are you ready for some serious pie action, son? Yeah, but I'm not eating it because I'm trying to Now they're... Oh, come on! Right, there's a pie. Right, so, I'll have that chopping board, please, Thomas. Okay. So, little... Wait, no, it's hot. Okay, a little tip for you. This is a loose bottomed pie tin, okay? Oh, you just need to put that across there, yeah. you want it there? Okay. So the easiest way to serve this is like that. Sit it on a bowl, and now the pie is off, which is what we want. So now I can pop that on there, get rid of that, move that across, and now we have our wonderful Italian chicken pie with or without anchovies? That is the question, Thomas. Right, can you see that okay, Emily? Uh, On the cutaway? Yeah, that looks good to me. Yeah, perfect. Right, let's cut it open. Which side would you like me to cut so they can see inside? What? This way? Uh, yeah. All right, so look, no hole. So I didn't pierce it. And that was a really good question because usually I would. So nice, crisp, buttery pastry. Beautifully glazed. Right, just have a little smell of that, Thomas. Have a smell inside there. How good does that smell? Good. Yeah? So that good. pains you to say that, doesn't it? Yeah. Where's my um, slice? Emily, do you have that cake slice? Oh, did you put it in here for me? Oh, there it is. There we go, right. So let's have a little look at this pie. There we go. Can you see that, Emily? Oh, I can't. How good does that smell? Right, let me just pop that onto this plate here. And there you go. My Italian chicken and fennel pie with Parmesan pastry with my little helper over here. Well done, son. We're going to go and eat that for tea now. No. Whether you like it or not. No. <laughs> If you want the recipe for this, go to masterclass.co website and you'll find it there. 
along with all the other recipes we've been doing all during lockdown, as well as all the other recipes we've been creating. We've got another great recipe coming on our Facebook page later on this week for you. It is a really good one. You're going to like this, so stay tuned on the Facebook page. We'll be back on Wednesday, and we're going to cook a beautiful Spanish frittata with a lovely smoked paprika aioli sauce and a sherry vinegar dressed salad to go on top. We'll see you Wednesday.